Hi, I'm Oz Clark. I'm the wine man. Let me tell you about wine. Wine's all about pleasure. If it doesn't give you a buzz, there's no point to it. If you want, you can just knock it back. But then you're treating it like a can of Coke. And the point about a can of Coke is that it always tastes the same. The thrill about wine is that every bottle tastes different. That's why we like some wines and don't like others. It's taste. Some people like broccoli. Some people don't. It's the same with wine. Follow the flavour and you'll soon be making sense of why different wines taste like they do. Grape varieties, regions of the world, national styles, they're all different. Brilliant! So I'm making this little video to help you choose wine, to taste it so that you actually do taste it, not just glug it back and, and well, enjoy it. Understand why you paid the money. Help you find the stuff you like and avoid the stuff you don't. And it's all about flavours. Uh, uh, and before you say, oh, I can't taste wine, can you tell the difference between a cup of coffee and a cup of tea? Between a banana and a haddock? Of course you can. It's the same with wine. The flavours of Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Merlot, Shiraz, they're all just as different. Come on, make the effort. <laughs> After all, I'm only trying to encourage you to drink a glass of wine and to think while you do it. What's bad about that? Read the label. It's there to tell you stuff, and there's a lot of information on it. Um, where the wine comes from, how old it is, what the grape variety is, who made it. After a bit, you'll be able to interpret the information on a wine label pretty well. And then, when you see a label that is just so cool, you must have it. Or one that's so dull that your raging thirst shrivels. Well, a quick look at the black and white will tell you whether the liquid, the important stuff, is any good or not. The first step to tasting wine is to look at the wine. So you pour the wine into a glass about one third full and then you tilt the glass against a white background so that you can gaze upon the gradations of colour between the rim and the centre. Uh, that is of course if you've got a white background. The colour gives you some idea of the taste of the wine due to the climate, the grape variety, the age. Hell, does it? Well, I suppose it does. I must admit, I don't spend much time on this stage. A waste of good drinking time. Next, smell the wine. Now, this is important, partly because if the wine's faulty, you won't have to put it in your mouth, and partly because some wines smell great, and the perfume will give you some idea what the stuff's going to taste like. So. Swirl the wine around the glass, that releases the aromas, and then take a good long sniff. Mm. What's your first impression? Now be honest, don't think what it should taste like, react to what it does taste like. Lots of wines have really everyday flavours. Um, chocolate, green apples, black currants, herbs and spices. Whatever you think you find, say it. Sometimes the wildest ideas become brilliant tasting notes. And you'll only build up a memory bank if the smells mean something to you. If you ever want to become a serious wine taster, by the way, that memory bank will be crucial. At last. You must have wondered when on earth we were going to start drinking. Sorry, tasting. Silly me. Right. Take a reasonable amount of wine in your mouth. Um, a third full, okay? Now, don't swallow yet. Either just hold the wine in your mouth, breathing in and out through your nose, and you can chew the wine a bit if you like, sort of like that. 
and you'll find out that the flavour of the wine increases second by second. Or, if you're brave, now this is what us so-called experts do, you've got the wine in your mouth, you suck a little air through your lips, like that, and through the wine in your mouth. <laughs> no, perhaps not. Honestly, you really do have to practice that, otherwise you'll choke all over your friends. <laughs> But the point is, all those flavours that we think we're tasting with our tongue are actually aromas wafted up into our nasal cavity. The tongue can only detect bitterness, sweetness, acid and salt. So the difference between a banana and a haddock is the aromas wafted up into our nasal cavity. And to be honest, we do it every time we eat and drink. So let's not get stressed about it. Think while you drink. It's natural. A spittoon. Well, I mean, you're not gonna spit at dinner, I mean, are you? But I often have to taste 100 wines on the trot. And if I swallowed, I'm, I'd be under the table after 50, so, I spit. But if I'm only tasting a few wines and they taste really great and I'm not driving and I've got no heavy meetings later on, hey, I swallow. If you're going to practice spitting, by the way, practice with water. Red wine makes a terrible mess and why waste the white? So, you've swallowed or spat. Now take a couple of seconds because good wines have an aftertaste when the flavours all sort of come together and give you a final sensation of what the wine really tasted like. Oh, and jot down your impressions. Just a few words on a pad and the whole taste experience can come rushing back. Because if you're going to be a good wine taster, you've got to develop your memory. Now, you don't need me to tell you that after a bottle or two of wine, there's a lot of things you can't remember, let alone the flavour of the Sauvignon Blanc. You know what? I don't really mind whether the champagne cork flies out with a mighty bang or eases out with a contented sigh, just so long as the champagne's been poured and I'm drinking it. But what I don't want is for it to froth up like a fountain and half the bottle to end up all over the floor. So I'll show you the smart way to open a fizz bottle, the contented sigh method. First, you've got to tear off the foil. Now this is how I do it. Now, you'll see there's a wire cage here. Now, that's there to stop the cork from flying out. What we've got to do is remove that without releasing the cork. Oh, important point here, by the way, don't aim the bottle at anybody. Flying corks can kill. Now, place your thumb or your whole hand over the bottle like that and undo the cage. Now, if the, if the cork is going to fly, you'll feel it move and you're ready for it. But if not, flip the cage off like that and put your hand back over the cork. Now, twist the cork and the bottle in opposite directions. You'll feel the cork loosen, but keep the pressure on. You'll be able to control it. Now, if you want a big bang, just let it go now. But if you want the suave, sophisticated performance, keep that pressure on and you can gently Please it out. Contented sigh. Once it's out, see I'm holding the bottle at about 45 degrees angle to prevent it firming up all over the place. So let's get pouring. Now angling the glass will help prevent it frothing over. <laughs> 